Okay, so uh, I'm sorry to miss uh, class today. Um, I had to take randomly take my kids to the doctor this afternoon, and so um, I'm missing your class. But I wanted to go over real quick how to do these problems on um, the board. So this was the first question that was on the board. So I want to walk through this real quickly. Um, when you do this um, on the board, I believe you get one or negative one and three are your solutions. So um, when you have x to the fourth, uh, you know you're going to have to do synthetic division twice. So it doesn't really matter which solution you choose um, because you're going to have to use both of them anyways. So uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to use three first. Probably most of you used three first. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'll put all the coefficients and uh, that constant of 15. Run this through synthetic division. First number comes down. 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 2 and 3 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 8 and 3 is negative 5. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. 10 and negative 15 is negative 5. And then 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, which gives me that 0 at the end. Now, uh, with uh, x to the fourth polynomials, it doesn't, it doesn't um, we can't be done just doing it once because when it goes from x to the fourth, it, it, it goes down to x to the third and we still can't solve uh, this problem. So I have x to the third plus x squared minus 5x minus 5, but I can't solve that yet. So I do need to do synthetic division one more time. And this is where the other uh, solution is going to come in, and I'll use the numbers uh, from the new equation that I just did. So uh, we run through synthetic division again. The purpose of this is to eventually get it to a quadratic where we can solve. So 1 will come down. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 1 and negative 1 is 0. 0 times negative 1 is 0. Negative 5 and 0 is negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5 getting us that zero that we need. Now this is a quadratic because it goes down one more degree. Uh, you'll notice that I'm missing that B term. That B term is zero. So uh, really my equation is just x squared minus five. Now from there, we're going to move on to quadratic formula. You could actually do this solving by um, square roots, but most of you guys are going to move on to um, uh, quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is on the board. So you can see uh, you get x equals negative b. Well, there is no b, so it's 0. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. Well, there is no b, so it's 0. Uh, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 5. All over 2 times a. 2 times 1 is 2. And so now, <clears throat> when I do this, you do the discriminant first, 0. Uh, you're doing this right here. 0 minus 4 times 1 times negative 5 is uh, positive 20. So you get 0 plus or minus the square root of 20 over 2. Now, I don't need a 0 anymore. Um, 0 plus or minus is just nothing plus or minus. So you can get that out of the way. Um, the 20 will then simplify uh, 4 times 5. And then 4 goes into 2 times 2. Since the pairs are 2s, the pairs come out. Unpaired stays in. And this will replace the radical 20. So I end up with just plus or minus 2 radical 5 over 2. Now you may have noticed that the 2 on the top and the 2 on the bottom could possibly cancel. They do. So you end up with just plus or minus radical 5. And there is all four of your solutions. Now we're not done. There are two problems on the board, so I want to go over this again. So you can see kind of... Uh, how you were supposed to do that. If you didn't know what you were doing now, um, you know, you could stop the video and you could try the second one if you wanted to just to see if you could do it right. The second problem down here, this is the second problem. Um, and when you plug this one in, um, because it's an x to the third, you're going to only be given one solution. In this case, it's negative two as that one solution. Um, and so when I run this through synthetic division, um, it should just give me right to a quadratic, which is exactly what I need. 
2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 3 and negative 4 is negative 7. Negative 7 times negative 2 is 14. Negative 6 and 14 is 8. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. And there is that 0 that I need. So now, uh, with it being a cubic, or x to the third, when I do this, it gets all right down to the x squared, the quadratic that I need. And so from here, I can just do a quadratic formula and find my answers. I'm going to do quadratic formula over here, opposite of b. Let's just do x equals opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Negative 7 squared is 49, minus 4, times a, times c, all over 2 times a, 2 times 2 is 4. When I do the discriminant, um, I get radical... Uh, I think it's negative 15 over 4. Uh, this is the other type of problem we went over last class is what to do with the negatives in there. But you guys, we already talked about this. You should already know. With a negative, you do need to place an i out front. That will make your radical positive. And then you would simplify the radical. But in this case, uh, radical 15 doesn't simplify. Uh, it breaks down into 3 and 5. But... Um, you don't end up with any pairs, so this is as simple as it's going to get. And so here, since it's x to the third, I should have three solutions. I have one there and two here, where one of my solutions is real and the other two are imaginary. Speaking of uh, real and imaginary solutions, there is a way to tell how many real and how many imaginary solutions you're going to have just based on looking at a graph. This is outcome 22. For that, I'm going to go over to Desmos here and just to show you this. So here's a graph that I can look at it, and um, based on the exponent, I can tell that I have three solutions. There should be three because it's an x to the third uh, problem. <clears throat> and you have to remember that a solution is an x-intercept. So like I have a solution right here, a solution right here, and a solution right here. So those are three solutions, and the, I should have three solutions, and those are them because solutions are where it crosses the x-axis. It turns out that in this type of problem, all of my solutions are real because they all cross the x-axis. I have three, you know, the exponent tells me I should have three solutions, and I see three times the graph crosses the x-axis. So that tells me that three of my solutions are going to be real, whereas none of them will be imaginary. Now, if I change this just slightly and look at it, well, now um, I have still three solutions. It's still an x to the third. But now notice here, I can only point to one part that crosses the x-axis. So in this case, there are three solutions, but only one of them is real because there's only one part that crosses the x-axis. But knowing that there are two, there are three solutions and only one of them I can point out, that means that only one of them is real. And that makes the other two missing, they must be imaginary. And so that's how we identify which ones are real and which ones are imaginary, by just seeing how many times it crosses the x-axis. Knowing that there should be three, but I can only point to one, means that one is real, the other two must be imaginary. So let's look at... Um, another one here, so I'm going to change this to uh, plus, and then we will, actually, I don't know if that was supposed to be minus or not. Let's go to the second graph. Okay, yeah. So here, um, here is an x to the fourth. So I should have four solutions. So when I go down here, I should have four solutions. And so if I can point to four times it crossing the x-axis, that tells me that all four of them are real. Uh, because there are four solutions and I see that it crosses the x-axis four times, I know that all four solutions are real and none of them will be imaginary. But if I do change this simply like that, now, it's still an x to the fourth problem, um, and so I still have four solutions. The only problem now is, though, I can only identify two x-intercepts. It only crosses the x-axis twice, which means that only two of the uh, solutions are real. Um, since there's a total of four and two are real, that means that the other two must be imaginary. And that's all outcome 22 is, and it's on your quiz. So... Hopefully that helps, and uh, uh, have a great...